Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to put some bevel theory into practice and look at the easiest ways of making models look plastic. So in a previous video we talked about some bevel theory, having a look at how we can use different bevels to give an implication of both weight and material to an object, even if you're not going to be adding things like materials to it, which is really important for 3D printing. I'm not going to recover all of that here, the video is linked in the description if you want to check that one out, but one of the important things covered on it is that plastic objects, especially larger plastic objects, have a tendency to have rounded edges to them. We can see that on this pelican case here, and I believe that's to help it come out of the moulds that make these plastic shapes. Now obviously if we take an object we can go into something like edge mode and then we can control and B to bevel our edges to make things look this plastic texture but that's really long winded to do on a whole modelling project where you've got to do it for every single edge. It would be vastly more easy if we've got a way to do that procedurally and in theory we do. We can go to modifiers, add a modifier and then add a bevel to this and we can just increase the amount of the bevel and up the segments, let's go for something like 16 to create a nice smooth edge. And we can change the angle method, I'm going to change this to none. But we have problems with this. This will work very well because we can extrude out additional faces and it will start doing things to add those bevels to all of those edges. But you'll notice very quickly in the center we get this really horrible shading and we get some pretty messed up geometry if I bring on the wireframe where we just get this cornering here around this object. Now I'm just going to turn that wireframe off to demonstrate why this is a problem. If I grab this face and then just G and then X that outwards, we can see how exaggerated this gets. Now this is slightly exaggerated by the fact that I've got a mat cap on, but it is not really where we'd want this to be. So unfortunately using the bevel modifier by itself is not really the solution if you want to do this quickly without having to bevel all the individual edges. Let's just bring that off to the side and bring in a new cube. So instead we need to employ some other tricks and there's two ones that work really well but they have a slightly different result and it does depend on what you want. So we're going to talk through both of those in this video and we'll talk about what the positives and the negatives of each of these methods is. So the first one is going to use a subdivision surface and this is something that people new to Blender often miss out is that adding a double of a modifier can give some quite interesting effects. So we're going to take this cube and we're going to add in a subdivision surface modifier. Now we don't want this this extreme but importantly we're going to actually use this to start defining the edges and control the subdivision surface. You'll see what I mean as we go through this. So if I just up the levels here we can see this makes a round circle, but what we really want to do if I go to my edge is basically break this up so that we've got these edge loops in place that are going to control the outside of this edge, basically like this. But instead of doing that manually, let's just get rid of all of those, we can do this by applying another subdivision surface modifier. So I'm just going to duplicate this, I'm going to keep our bottom one with the normal subdivision surface but we're going to add a simple subdivision surface on the top one. Now what this is actually doing, let's get rid of this for a second, is if I apply this and go into edge mode, we can see that this has broken this up into individual subdivisions and that's what's controlling the edges like that edge loop I showed you earlier. So we don't actually need this many subdivisions, we could maybe bring it down to two if we want something a bit more rounded or even one if we want it very rounded, I'm going to go back to two, and then our subdivision surface on our bottom one is just going to control how smooth this is in essence. So we'll leave it there. So this is useful as it gives us a control over how wide we want our bevel, which is going to be important, but what's great about this is if I go into face mode and then let's just extrude these up, you can see that the corners here are much nicer and I can go into face mode and then bring this forward and you can see it creates a much nicer overall effect than this beveling technique here. The shading is smoother and it's just broken down a lot more nicely. Now there is a slight issue with this, it does create a tiny amount of pinching on the corners but nothing you'd really see, especially if you up this second subdivision surface to keep making it smoother. The other issue with this is that we are creating something that is very, very dense. If we just apply all, I'm just going to use hard ops for that. 
and we come into vertex mode or edge mode, let's go into edge mode, it's a bit clearer, we can see how dense this mesh becomes. Now that can be positive for a lot of things, but it can also mean that you've got a lot more information which can slow down the computer as well. Now this also has one other interesting effect, which could be considered a positive or a negative. And to do that, we'll look at, let's say the top bit here. So let's go into edge mode. I can control an R here if I just want to bring up this top bit and then let's E and extrude that up. And then we'll just do the same thing here. So control an R and then I'm going to go into face mode and E and extrude that out. So we've got a slightly different effect here, but the important bit to notice with this, again, could be positive or negative, is that each time we break this up, because our subdivision is getting smaller each time and becoming more dense, our rounded edge becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. And we can see the difference in the radius of this turn here compared to the one on this corner here. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. If we go back and have a look at our Pelican case, we can notice that generally on the smaller parts, they will have a smaller bevel. Again, I think that's to do with the molding process as it's not gonna be as hard to pull out those smaller parts. So this is fairly realistic in terms of a plastic object, but at the same time, it might not be exactly what you wanted. Say if you were to be modeling something where you wanted to keep this whole bevel the same, notice that this has had an effect all down this side here, where it is much tighter than we've got on this side there. So there is a slight issue with this as it will affect the edges where you put these additional edge loops in to create this shape. You also might not want this if you're making larger scale armor or really large models that have got some sort of plastic or slightly more organic armor to them like you might find on some sort of sci-fi android. So there is one other option as well. Now I've been playing around with this a little bit recently and it has some interesting properties to it but it seems to solve this issue. And that is instead of subdividing as our initial point, we're actually gonna add in a bevel, but we're gonna use the bevel to put in control loops. I'm just gonna turn on wireframe so you can see what I'm doing here. And what we're gonna do is add in a modifier, add our bevel, and we're gonna put this up to two segments. Let's up the amount. But importantly, we are going to change the shape in the profile section from 0.5 to one. And what that does is effectively puts in our edge loops at a width of wherever we choose. So this is gonna leave the middle section relatively free of geometry, or at least more free of geometry than we get from this shape. Let's just change that limit method to none, which is quite useful for this. And then we can do the same thing and add in a subdivision surface. So we'll add that there, let's up that a little bit. And we can see how this has created this slightly plastic looking shape that we can control in the same way we could control this object over here using the top modifier, in this instance, the bevel, to control how wide that is. Now, there are some other things we want to be careful with this. The first is that in geometry, I would take off this clamp overlap. Now, this is important to understand what effect this has, depending on what you want. If I put this back on, and we go into face mode, and I press E, you'll notice that the bevel has instantly almost disappeared from the subdivision surface. Until I drag it out, and then it comes back. This is because the clamp overlap is not allowing the bevel on all sides to be any larger than would cause issues because of the new faces being created and any overlap that would happen on this bevel. So that's one option, but it can be annoying in that each time we move it out, it sort of restarts the object bevel. So there's a positive to this in that it will never cause issues, but that it does affect the bevel everywhere. If I turn that off and press E, you'll notice that it starts immediately with an error we're getting this problem with this face fighting and then as soon as I drag it to the required width so there it will then sort itself out and then keep at that width now I quite like this as an option because it means I can see where there's an issue and importantly if I've set the bevel to begin with I want it to stay at that level of bevel but it just depends on what you want so that clamp overlap is definitely an option now what I like about this, let's just turn this amount down, is that as long as we stay within the relative amounts that we want, so let's say for example E and we get past that error, as soon as we get past that error, so let's say there, we now don't have a problem with our bevel. It's gonna work just fine. And importantly, if I come out of this, you'll notice that even when I'm making this smaller object like we had over here, 
the bevel is keeping this larger size to it. It doesn't get smaller each time we get to a smaller object, but again, it does have that limitation of we've got a minimum amount that we need to extrude out before the bevel will be okay, unless we use that clamp overlap. So these are two different options effectively on what we want to do. Let's just turn off that wireframe. One that's going to get progressively smaller bevels and one that's going to try and maintain the bevel being at exactly the same size, regardless of how much smaller you get on the faces. In both instances, they just use a series of two modifiers and they shouldn't be too taxing on your computer unless you've got a hell of a lot going on. Now, I will mention one other issue with this, and I say issue, it just depends on what you want and how pedantic you're being. If I just G and then Z this up further and then drag this face out a long way, so I'm gonna go all the way to here. If you have very, very long edges here, this corner, I'm just gonna come in here, gets slightly less of a perfect bevel than we'd want. It's not as confined as this side. In fact, if I just duplicate this so we can see them next to each other, we can see that this is not exactly the same. The profile is a little bit more gradual on this one. Now, that's just something to be aware of if you're gonna have really, really long edges. It is almost imperceptible, but I like to be able to really clearly talk to you about these problems. And it is something we can quite easily solve if I just control an R and put an edge loop here and drag it up, you can see that it's actually sorting that bevel out. So we can fix this by adding in our own edge loops, which will then create a new bevel on each side, which will then control the subdivision surface. So there is a slight issue with this, but it does allow you to control what sort of bevel you want. And if you want that bevel to be gradiated and gradually get smaller, or if you want a bevel to be maintained at a single size. So hopefully that gives you some options on creating these plastic looking objects using modifiers to create the beveled edges to give that plastic appearance. I just thought I'd show an example of this in action. In this instance, I'm using the double sub D modifier to recreate some of the really basic shapes shown in this Pelican case and how quick this makes it to do it without having to bevel each of the individual edges because these modifiers do it for you. So I think these both are really fun techniques, something really nice to add to your workflow, and hopefully you'll be able to use that in some future projects. If you do think you're going to use this to save yourself some time, please do say in the comments section, or if you have any other ways that you'd like to create this appearance of certain materials in a 3D object for 3D printing, so without using actual materials, I love having that chat and conversation about what people are doing in Blender, and it really helps everyone in the community. If you found that video useful, please do hit the like button, it really does help with the YouTube algorithm and get the video seen by more people, which is really appreciated from me and hopefully from them who find the videos useful. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe. And if you do want to support the channel further, we do have a Patreon page where for a few dollars a month, you get these videos ad free a week early and other great perks as well, like being part of the Patreon Discord. Have a great day, guys.